up geeks and welcome back. Today is gonna be different. I'm going to customize a current doll. I've been obsessed with them for a while and I finally got some time to work on one. I was just going to repaint her but suddenly I decided I wanted to give her a VJD like treatment. So I'm going to carve her face to make inserted resin eyes. Lucky for me, most of these dolls have molded on eyelids, so it's easier to cuff their eyes. Anyway, I took my time because I really wanted to make them a little bit bigger than they actually are. I have to say, I was really confident doing this because I have like 10 of these blank heads I get from Amazon. Once done, it's time to remove this cuff, so we can easily access to the inside of the head. Oh my gosh, this is looking like a BJD already. <laughs> of course, as a final step, I'm going to smooth all the areas where I was working with the Asacto knife. Time to work on the eye. I made a basic eyeball shape using a epoxy skull. This was a trial and error process until I got the iris size I was looking for. After that, I made a mold using Amazing Mold Putty. This is a two-part compound mold making rubber. I ended up making different types of irises using white polymer clay. I know they're far from being perfect, but this is basically just me experimenting and I'm sure they'll do the work. I made a lot of them, but I decided only to show the process of the ones I ended up using. Otherwise, this would have been a very long video. As you can see, I'm going for a very anime type of eyes with these ones. I'm using regular acrylic paints and I'm just painting them the same way I would do it on a paper since this iris is flat. I'm adding a tiny little bit of glitter and trying to strategically place them. Now it's time for the UV resin magic. I'm sealing everything with the UV resin and after that I will make the dome. Of course I'm using a UV lamp to cure the resin. This looks so cool. And now it's time for a quick showcase of the eyes I made. Of course we get these ones, which obviously look very anime-like. I made a pair trying to make them a little bit more realistic. These glittery ones I definitely love. They look so magical and whimsical. And finally these ones which are a mix between cartoon and realistic. You know, like a middle point. At this point I was trying to decide which one to use, and I chose to go with this one, but you will see, I will change my mind later. Ok, but now it's time for the face up, and I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty intimidated having to repaint a doll face without eyes, I don't know, for some reason I was really scared, since usually the eyes are a guide for the whole face up, in my opinion. You know, they set the tone for the whole paint job and them not being physically present in the face I'm repainting it was so weird in the beginning but after breaking the eyes, it was not that hard, I guess you just have to try them on the face from time to time to see if you're going in the right direction it was not really so different from a regular repaint job and I can even say it was a little bit easier And I was really feeling like I was repainting an actual mini BJ Diggy. And talking about that, I was just mesmerized how beautiful this doll face mold is. And yeah, I have saw a lot of cool dolls pictures all over the internet, but being working on one is completely different. They are so freaking gorgeous. Like, I think when it comes to the doll market, and I mean both the collectors and the playline doll market, Asian dolls are so on a higher level than the western dolls brands 
especially Korea, China, and Japan. And I'm not talking only about the actual resin PJDs, I'm talking about Pulips dolls, Cherry dolls, Azon and Pure Nemo dolls, Parabox and Obitsu dolls, Kurn dolls, Sinji dolls, Lika-chan dolls, they all have that kawaii factor that we're missing here, I think. I don't know, I'm just obsessed and I think I will be focused on this kind of dolls for a while. They are so cute and intriguing that I cannot stop now. At this point, the face-up is pretty much completely set, and I'm just giving the final touches and details. So it's time for the struggling part, you know. The lashes. For some reason, I thought that not having the eyes it would make the process easier for me, but no, nope. I struggle as usual. And now it's time to place the eyes. And for that, I'm using a little bit of Dorilla Clear Grip. I thought about using actual BJD's eye putty, but I realized for this small head size, this is way better. And here we have the head with the eyes on plate. And oh my god, I'm really in love how she turned out. This is the body I will be using for her. I got some of these uh, from eBay. They're actually off brand articulated bodies, but I was surprised how good they actually look, and the articulation level really reminds me of a BJD. For the cheap price, they are great. So yeah, it's time to seal the head. And I'm just going to use some Gorilla Clear Grip for this. And it's time to move on to the outfit. I decided I'm not going to completely create a new dress for her, but instead I'm going to modify and make alterations to this per Disney Store Mulan dress I already have. I love the glittery fabric, so yeah, let's do it! The first step was getting rid of the unnecessary parts. And after that I separated the bodies from the skirt. I'm going to use a pink ribbon to hide the red color. And I'm not going to sew it, I'm just gluing it, you know, because why not? This doll is just about having fun. So I already glued the ribbon to the collar, and also to the sleeves. And now I'm going to use this pastel yellow satin as a new sash to hide the blue one. This time I'm sewing it. And here it is. It's looking like a complete different outfit already. I'm using more ribbons to create more details for her sash. 
At this point I was really in love with all the idea of this old cotton candy color palette. For the lower part of the outfit I want to make a short skirt, so I'm cutting it. I just gathered the fabric with pins and secure everything with stitches. I also added some pink ribbon just to match the bodies. And now it's time to sew both parts together. And here it is, and I am really like where this is going. I will use lace trims because, you know, I am going full kawaii at this point. And here is the outfit completely done. I really love all this cotton candy lolita magical girl vibe. I also added a huge giant bow to the sash. Like, really, it's hard to believe that this started as a basic cheap Disney store Mulan dress. I also made white stockings for her with white lace trim details. For her shoes, I will be using the same amazing mold putty I used for the ice mold. Just because I think it is like a rubber, it would be great for doll shoes. It has like a 3 minute cure time, so I have to work fast and in small amounts. And yeah, we love time pressure, you know. To make long story short, this was actually more painful than I initially thought. The material is in fact great for doll shoes, but it cures too fast. Like, you literally have no time to do anything, so it was really hard for me to recall all this painful process. But, you know, in the end, I managed. I ended up sculpting this platform Mary Jane shoes, which I really love. Material is great, but honestly, I don't think I will use it again for doll shoes. And finally, I'm painting them pastel purple coral. And here they are, with a protective layer of Liquitex high gloss varnish. And it's time to move on to her wig. And yeah, I know. This is not the color of her hair on the thumbnail, but you'll see why later. I have to say, I tried to make a synthetic hair soon on wig, but I fell miserably in the part line. I just put that one on hold so I can finish it later. I decided to go with a classic acrylic yarn wig. You know, old school never fails. The reason I changed the wig at last minute is because I felt that this color was kinda breaking all the kawaii cotton candy color palette. I thought it was going to complement it, but in my opinion, I was totally wrong. And here's the final wig. Basically, it's just the same wig, just in another color, so I decided not to record the same process twice. Also, it's just a basic yarn wig, not a big deal. But I think with this color, she looks way better. Also, yeah, more last minute change. I decided to go with the anime eyes, just because I think they fit way better for this character. I also noticed her head looked a little bit flat when you compare it to her busy outfit, so I knew she needed a head ornament really bad. I'm using white polymer clay to sculpt a cute fox mask, inspired by those beautiful kitsune masks. So yeah, once it's baked and cooled down, I'm proceeding to sand it down. And instead of using reds like in the more traditional kitsune masks, 
I decided to go with, you know, pinks, just to complete the whole kawaii compendium. Once painted, I'm using high gloss varnish to seal it. And here it is. It's so cute and glossy. I think it would look cute as a ring or something. I use a small magnet so it can be attached and removed way more easily. And we're done! Just kidding, more last minute change. I just decided to add some pink ribbon details to the stockings. And now we're done, officially. So here we have our girl, the wig, the outfit, the accessories, so yeah, let's dress her up. So I'm really really thankful if you make it to here. I also really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did creating her. Despite all the cons and experimentations in this doll, I think she turned out really cute and adorable. Things I learned, I just love creating resin eyes for dolls and this is something I definitely want to improve in the future. Also, I really want to work on other Asian brand dolls since I'm really obsessed how cute they are. I'm for sure not working on another doll without making a concept art first. <laughs> so you guys know, if you like this doll, like this video, share it so others can enjoy my work as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do, I will get you covered. So that's all for today, until the next time, bye!